Isagi Yoichi is the man we all know and love, so today we will be taking a deep dive into every ability that Isagi possesses. The first ability we're going to go over is Isagi's ability to smell goals. If you're a frequent visitor of my channel, consider subscribing. The first time we saw this being displayed was in Chapter 7, as Baru charged up toward Isagi as he said that only he is the true king, as he wanted Isagi to bow down. Isagi was frozen in his position as he didn't know what he could do against him, which made him contemplate retreating as he thought about what a striker would do at a time like this. Right after that, Raichi and Kunigami take their chances to assert themselves because of Isagi's inability to do anything as they both desperately wanted a pass from him. Suddenly he went into a trance as Isagi passed the ball to his his right side when Baru charged up to him. It went towards Kunigami as he scored the first goal for Team Z through his powerful lefty shot. In Chapter 9, Kunigami asked Isagi why he passed the ball to him back then because he reckoned that Raichi was in a better position to score than he was, which made him surprised that he passed the ball to him instead since he was also being marked by a defender. Isagi told Kunigami that he passed it unconsciously back then, but he noticed that if he passed the ball to Raichi, he still would have had to deal with Baru. But even so, he could smell a goal from Kunigami as he knew how powerful his shot was from experience. The second ability we're going to go over is Asagi's spatial awareness. The first time we truly saw this shine was in Chapter 12, as Isagi realized something when Bachira took the corner kick, as he realized that Nico was always there to try and assist Okawa, as Nico actually was the core of the team. He was ruining their opportunities to attack while maintaining the balance between defense and offense, as he was the one who had sent that impressive pass to Okawa. Team Y's secret leader had always been Nico, as Isagi wanted to cut the root of Team Y's strength which is why this was their chance to attack as the goalkeeper was out of position. Nico managed to block the shot, which led to Gagamaru shooting the ball into the net instead as he tied the game. The third ability we're going to go over is Asagi's direct shot. The first time we saw this ability was in Chapter 13 as Bachira passed the ball toward Isagi from the right side of the field. Isagi took that opportunity with both hands as he rammed the ball into the left upper corner. The fourth ability we're going to go over is Isagi's ability to adapt to any situation that comes in front of him. In Chapter 54, we saw this in full display as Isagi was in a trance. When Naruhaya missed his chance to score in front of the goal by trying to mimic Isagi's direct shot, he missed as Nagi got the loose ball. Isagi ran up the field as Isagi thought that he could possibly reach the level of geniuses if he were to combine Naruhaya's off-the-ball ability with his direct shot. He realized that the thing he was still lacking was the eyes of the opponent, as a human's field of vision is only in front of them. So whenever someone needs to check their surroundings, they have to move their head for that to be possible. Baru needs to be aware of both of them, and because of their positions, it's impossible to keep tabs on both at the same time. He needs to check on the ball sometimes, and in that second Isagi could get into a blind spot. Baru will move reflexively to find him, and he'll move the opposite way again as he defeated Baru in a one-on-one -on -one situation and rammed the ball into the left upper corner afterward to secure victory as he devoured Naruhaya's talent completely. This also ties into another ability called off-the-ball movements. After that moment, Naruhaya told Isagi that he thought they were on even grounds too. When he was in that position to shoot, he needed the direct shot as he tried to copy it, but it didn't go well because his version was the Walmart version of Isagi's shot. But he's different, as he took away Naruhaya's weapon and made it his own. And that's probably because he's not afraid of change, as he acknowledged that Isagi isn't an ordinary person. He fought with a full resolution of destroying himself, and from there Isagi was able to create the best version of himself, as he said that Isagi was a genius in terms of adaptability, which is why he underestimated the difference between their ability. The fifth ability we're going to go over is Isagi's back heel shot. The first and only time we've seen this is in Chapter 81, as Isagi ran diagonally to the goalpost and wanted Chigiri to send him the ball as a result, as it's the future that he envisioned, as it's his territory. But little did he know that Rin anticipated all of it as he managed to keep up. Isagi knew that he couldn't shoot like that as he got some new determination. He figured that he actually got Rin even though he'd be able to stop him if he tried to shoot here. But on the flip side, it means that he has to step out in order to block his shot as he realized that the next move they make would be their last. This is only possible because Rin could predict what Isagi does, which made him get into the blind spot of a genius. Since Isagi is not shooting here, he already has taken that last step, which means that Rin will fall behind 
because his actual last move is different as it's a direct kick backwards, which is where the back heel shot was born as it went into the right upper corner. The sixth ability we're going to go over is Reflex. We saw this in the third selection as Hiori gave Asagi advice after he failed to match his vision of scoring a goal with his execution as Rin scored the goal instead. Hiori told him that if he only starts moving after he thinks about it, it'll be too late. Seeing thinking and moving in that order might have been fast enough for him so far, but that won't work if he's aiming to play on on the same level as Rin and Shidu. Since he doesn't have the same physical abilities as them, he'd always be a step behind if he tried to create a vision at the same speed that they make their plays, as he told Isagi to do it in reverse, which would mean that he moves first, then thinks and sees. This advice got put to fruition rather quickly as Isagi told himself that he'd be an idiot if he started to think after he looked. That thought process isn't going to cut it as he could be moving by feeling and believing in his capabilities, as this was the first time Isagi unconsciously tapped into Metavision. After this moment, Hiori passed the ball towards Rin and Shido, as Isagi suddenly bursted past those two egoists and rammed the ball into the left upper corner as a result. The seventh ability we're going to go over is Isagi's positioning after Rin tapped the ball away from Sei and won the one versus one duel. The ball bounced off those two egoists as it flew towards the 16-meter box and flew over Aiku. But little did he know that Isagi was anticipating this to happen as he got out of Aiku's blind spot and rammed the ball into the right upper corner as he scored the decisive goal against the Japanese U-20 team. The eighth ability we're going to go over is Isagi's lefty direct shot. We first saw this in Chapter 212 as Corona passed the ball towards Isagi so that he could finish it off. But little did he know that Ness got in the way, as it was his job to crush Isagi by any means necessary in the event that Lorenzo gets in Kaiser's way. After studying his direct shot, Ness realized that it was trash, as it was a defective shot, that he could only shoot with his right foot which meant that he'd be finished once he knocked Isagi off balance. Or so he thought as Isagi told him to think again. After that moment, Isagi rammed the ball into the net through his lefty direct shot, which was his first goal in the Neo Egoist League as well. The ninth ability we're going to go over is Isagi's Meta Vision. In Chapter 181, we get a detailed explanation of this ability as Isagi followed Kaiser closely to study his thought patterns. After a while, he realized that he wasn't looking at the ball at all as he was twisting his neck to see everything. In the next chapter, Isagi Isagi was impressed by the way Kaiser uses his eyes as humans have two types of vision. The first one directly perceives something in a direction which is your central vision. The low-resolution images that are outside of the central vision are peripheral vision. And when it comes to football, in order to perceive the entire field, every player and the ball while in motion, it's important to be able to absorb as much information as possible from your peripheral vision. If you focus too much on the ball with your central vision, you lose information on the scene around you, so when it comes to your surroundings, surroundings, your decision-making speed is delayed. But even knowing that when one has to dribble and pass while running at full speed, they'll focus too much and narrow their field of vision as a result. But Kaiser is different as he's constantly inputting new information that he gets from his peripheral vision. By constantly renewing information of both friends and foes, he knows who is doing what and where. By having that overwhelming amount of information, he's able to arrive at a best point that no one else could understand. Compared to the world Isagi can see, it's like he's watching from a higher dimension. If the state of the field is a two-dimensional image, then the image of a play that one player can visualize would be something three-dimensional. Having a vision yet above that which can visualize every image and destroy them, one could say that Kaiser's eyes and brain are a four-dimensional vision, as it's a godlike vision that stands above that of everyone else, which is called metavision. By taking information from a lower dimension like Isagi has been doing, he realized that he could never win against him, as that's not something just anyone could do spatial awareness, perception, and football IQ. Only by overlapping all of this Kaiser is able to attain and discern information from his four-dimensional vision. And by connecting that to the Kaiser impact at the end, he becomes an exceptional striker who can create goals which is the mechanic of the genius Michael Kaiser. In chapter 183, he consciously put it into use as he needed to use his peripheral vision to see the entire field and latch to even more information in his field of view. Not only does he need to understand the entire 
entire flow of the game, but also who is going where to do what and what's going to happen next. He needs to try and process everything inside of his head as he realizes that it's very tiring on the eyes and brain. At some intervals, he needs to move his neck and add more information to his field of view. He realized that his teammates were more wary of Nagi's movements as Chigiri was rushing to the side, moving to wait for a pass in his own zone. Ryo seems to be having more trouble slipping through alone and has chosen to coordinate with AGI this time, as Isagi still didn't see a breach. But the sensation is a rush as he was gathering information that he couldn't have seen before. Surely, precisely and substantially as this new sensation is flowing through Asagi, there's a new brain circuit upon him as if the universe is granting him super senses. He doesn't want to lose track of how this feels and keep going. AGI was running in the back as there were 35 more meters to the goal. If their defense breaks here, someone will move in from the side and Chigiri will be free, so that's a problem. But he hasn't passed yet as their formation would break if they didn't do something about that. He wanted Yukimiya to restrict their space, as Nagi was stepping back because he moved away from his mark. He has to go as he realized that Ness isn't moving at all. Isagi noticed that Ryo passed to Nagi as he used AGI as a decoy. He'll trap the ball with his back to the goal again, as he urged his teammate to not get so close to him. Isagi saw Nagi's image as he stole the ball from the prodigy and moved up the field afterwards. The tenth ability we're going to go over is Isagi's ability to smash smell other players, their egocentrism, as well as his own. In chapter 197, Isagi was wondering why Yukimiya and him couldn't understand one another as he outright rejected his plan, even though it would have benefited both of them equally. He thought that there is no way it'll come true as his wish is way too self-centered, like he is the protagonist. This is where he realized that Nagi said a similar thing as this was the reason why Nagi achieved peak concentration and defeated Isagi. The way Yukimiya blindly believes in himself and has to drive to accomplish something is egocentrism. After that, he wondered if Ryo thought the same way as Ryo's level of concentration was through the roof. It's not just so that he could pass the ball to Nagi, but it's also because he's been consumed by egocentricism. It's a story about making Nagi the best striker in the world, which is where Ryo is the protagonist, and that sense of egocentricism allows him to reach a flow state. In order for him to achieve maximum performance, egocentricism is absolutely necessary. If there are protagonists that want to score, there are also protagonists that want to pass. If there are stories Stories based on logic, there must be stories that are based on feelings as well as everyone is their own protagonist. There are countless stories and protagonists orbiting the earth as he realized that their individual feelings of egocentrism overwrite one another as he was unconsciously using him as a side character in his story. Regardless of who is correct if they don't behave as protagonists, they will never be able to construct a new goal as Isagi's way of thinking was too shallow. He remembered what he'd experienced at Blue Lock as it had been the constant clashing of every protagonist's egoism. Egoists can only exist as protagonists, as this is Isagi's new piece. After this, Isagi noticed Ryo's egocentrism as he tried to pass the ball to Nagi, which got blocked by him. Watch this playlist next that has similar types of videos, or watch this video next that YouTube has recommended to you.